Hello YouTube, let's talk about everything you need to know about Carnival Embarkation. If you've cruised for a while, this is going to be nothing new to you. You know everything about Carnival Embarkation probably, but new cruisers all the time are asking me about how the process works and what they need to know. So let's go over it. Let's start back at the beginning. You booked your cruise and you choose at that time, as soon as you book your cruise, you're going to choose your bed configuration and whether or not you want your time dining early or late seating based on what's available depending on how early you've booked your cruise. But at that time, you're not able to check in. check ins going to open 14 days before your cruise. Now that's 14 days at midnight. Now for platinum and diamond cruises, it's going to be 16 days, but you know all about that if you're one of those. This is for new cruisers who are looking to find out how embarkation, check-in, and things like that are going to work. So at 14 days, that's the current time frame for when you can check in at Carnival. It used to be a lot longer, but they've changed that a couple of years ago. And at the time of this recording, it's still 14 days, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for a while. If your check-in date, take a look right here. If your check-in date here is, say, Saturday, check-in is going to open for you midnight Friday night, when Friday becomes Saturday. Now, you can check in any time after that, but in those 14 days before your cruise. But if it's important to you to get an early check-in time or a specific check-in time that you desire, you want to be there midnight on the day of your check-in. So you check in, you choose a check-in time. Now you just wait until it's time to the day of the cruise. Now, let's talk about check-in time versus boarding time. Check-in time is when they're going to allow you into the terminal. And they are going to make you stick to that check-in time. So if you want a specific time, you need to be there at midnight to get the earliest or whatever time you'd like. But check-in time is when you get into the terminal. That does not mean boarding time. New cruisers often confuse check-in time and boarding time. Check-ins when you get to go into the terminal. Boarding time is when they've cleared the ship and they let you out of the terminal onto the ship. Most of the time, if everything's running smoothly, check-in time is going to be sometime between 10.30 and 11 a.m. 80% of the cruises you go on, that's going to be the case. But if something happens on the ship, some kind of failure mechanically or a Coast Guard inspection or something like that, they're going to push that back. So check-in boarding time could be a little later than that. So it's the day of your cruise. If you're driving to the terminal or you're staying in a hotel near the terminal, here's how it's going to work. If you're driving, you're going to cruise into the terminal. You can drop off your luggage or you can take it with you directly to the uh, parking area and then carry your luggage back over. But you're going to have to park that car and then make it back to the terminal. Checked luggage versus carry-on. You may not get some of that checked luggage until late in the afternoon. Sometimes we don't get luggage delivered until 4, even 5 p.m. sometimes. So carry whatever you think you're going to need for the day with you. Uh, anything important, meds, you should always carry in your carry-on. But also, if you, have, if you want to get in the pool, you're going to need your bathing suit, maybe a change of clothes. I always like to carry something to change for dinner in. Several times we've cruised, we have not gotten our luggage by the time for dinner. So I make sure I pack something to go to dinner in that night. So you're going to drop your luggage off here. You're going to give your luggage to the porter that you're not carrying on. You can carry on everything if you'd like, but that can become cumbersome. Make sure you tip your porter and you head on over to the check-in area. Each person is allowed to carry on with them a 12-pack of soda in 12-ounce cans only or one bottle of wine. So keep that in mind if you're interested. You show up at the terminal. Let's back up a little bit. Faster to the fun, suites, priority boarding, platinum, and diamond. Those cruisers, they get to board at any time they want. You can step into that priority access line at any point during the day disregarding your check-in time if you are faster to the fun, sweets, platinum, diamond, or a wedding guest. But everyone else has to adhere to this time. If you're not showing up at the correct time, they're going to put you right over here in this early or late line, and at their discretion, they're going to let you into the building. So you kind of want to adhere to the time you've got. Now, you've checked in. They've let you into the terminal. Here's the way this is going to go down after that. 
in places like Miami, they do it a little bit reversed. You're going to walk right up to a table, as you see here. They're going to, you're going to give them all your information. They're going to check all your documentation, make sure you've got a credit card or some kind of payment on file. Then you're going to go through security, and then you're going to be seated in an area to await boarding. In places like Tampa, you're going to go through security first. This also is the way it works in Port Canaveral. You're going to go through security first, then you're going to go to check-in, and then you're going to be seated. If you're diamond, platinum, suite, or wedding guest, you're going to have separate seating in almost every terminal, separate from everyone else. If you are faster to the fun, you'll also have a separate area in most terminals. Uh, terminals like Miami, they don't have a separate area for faster to the fun. You'll be sitting with the regular crowd. And everyone else will be handed a zone pass, which will tell you the zone you're going to board the ship in, and you'll have a seat. Now, if it's before boarding has begun, say before 1045 or 11 o'clock, you're going to just sit and wait. If you don't want to sit and wait, if you'd rather just walk onto the ship after you check in, then you're going to want to show up after 11 a.m. If it's important to you to get on early, though, you're going to get in the terminal and you're going to wait. Then once boarding starts, they're going to call wedding guests, diamond, platinum, suites, and then faster to the fun, and then they're going to start working through the zones. You'll hear all of this happening while you're sitting in the terminal. They'll give a announcement that they're going to start boarding everyone, say in the next 10 minutes, then you'll hear them call wedding guests, you'll hear them move to diamond, you'll hear them move to platinum, then faster to the fun will be called, and then they'll start working through the zones. So if it's important to you to get on early, you'll want to buy something like a suite or faster to the fun or get there as early as possible in your boarding zone to get the earliest zone possible they hand out zones on a first come first serve basis okay so then they've called everyone and you've got on the ship the process goes pretty fast once they start calling groups you really if you were a diamond versus say zone 14 you're talking half an hour difference total most of the time between when they call diamond to when they start calling those zones so now you're on the ship the first thing you should do is find this sign this is my suggestion you don't have to do it this way but you might as well get this out of the way the first thing you want to do is find this sign and figure out where your muster station is Go to your muster station, show them your boarding pass. They're going to check you off, and that's it. You don't have to worry about muster the rest of the day. Try to pay attention on the pad to make sure they check everybody in your party, though. Then you're free to do whatever you'd like. If your suite's faster to the fun, you can go ahead and drop your luggage off in your room, but you can't dawdle in your room until 1.30. You can drop it off, and you got to get out of there. That didn't used to be the case. Used to be, you, if you had faster to the fun or suites, you could go directly to your room, but that's not the case anymore. Carnival may switch it back, but right now, 1.30 is when most rooms open on most embarkation days, and you can drop your luggage off, but then you got to get out of there. Now, once you've done that, there are going to be several places to eat. So you can explore the ship. You can start touring it, or you can go find a place to eat. Uh, now, on this is where it differs a little bit. On some ships, like the Celebration, you're going to have several options to eat. But on your smaller ships, like, say, Paradise or the Pride, you're going to have a couple of places, your buffet and maybe a couple of paid venues. But mainly, it's going to be the buffet. The main dining room is not going to be open on embarkation day for lunch, but it will be open that evening. This is also your time if you need to take care of anything, if you want to change your dining time, or if you need to switch keys uh, for cabins, or you need to set up your account or fix anything, go to guest services now, you can take care of that. And that's it, that's embarkation. After 1.30, they'll have the sail away party, and check out some of my earlier videos for that. Uh, I've got uh, several vlogs on embarkation day that might help you out.
Well, I think that covers everything. I hope you got some information that you were looking for out of this embarkation video. If anyone can think of anything I didn't cover, please let me know and we'll do a follow-up video on what people know about embarkation. Thanks for watching.